Hi everyone, it's Kristen. Welcome back for another polymer clay earring tutorial. Today's video is from Jen of the Young Soul Jewelry. She's our artist spotlight for this week. She is going to be sharing with us her dried floral slab technique. So she's using dried flowers, showing you how to arrange them on the slab, cut them out, all of that, sharing all her best tips and tricks with you guys. I'm so excited for this video today, and I want you to go check out Jen. She's on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and she has her own website with amazing jewelry. I think you guys are going to love her. I've had so much fun scrolling through her website and checking out all her designs. They're so creative, so unique, so beautiful. So check her out, and let's get right into the tutorial. Hey, friends. It's Jen with the Young Soul Jewelry, and I am so super excited to be here with you today to share with you one of my very favorite techniques. Kristen, thank you so much for letting me be a part of your channel. Okay, friends, we are going to take these beautiful dried wildflowers that I picked up from Amazon, and we're going to make a slab with these and make some awesome spring earrings. I got all four of these packs of flowers from Amazon. They all came together. I think it was about $15, and I got this on Prime, so it was in my mailbox on my front porch within two days. I'm gonna go with a Sculpey Souffle Igloo because of course this is the holy grail of white clay. I like a clean, crisp white background with my florals because it just makes these colors pop even more. You are more than welcome to use any kind of clay that you like, whatever you like working with. This is just my favorite, so this is what we're gonna go with today. I think I'm gonna pick out some pinks and yellows for a pretty spring slab today, so let's get right to it. Okay, friends, before we proceed, I do want to let you know this is a messy process. You're going to have petals and pieces of flowers everywhere, but definitely trust the process. It's so worth it in the end because once these earrings are finished, you're just going to be in awe of yourself that you made these. So I'm going to go ahead and pick out my colors. These are definitely my favorite out of the whole pack, so I know I want to use these. These are awfully delicate because they are real and they're dried, so you do have to be careful with them or you will rip the petals. Um, let's see, these will be really pretty with those. I'm interrupting this video for one quick minute just to make sure that you know about all the amazing resources that we have for you over in our Etsy shop for polymer clay artists. So the first one is the complete guide to polymer clay earrings. This is a step-by-step -step guide, all the details of the best clays to use, conditioning your clay, baking your clay, literally everything is in this ebook, more than we can cover in videos and things like that, um, just because there's a ton of it. Um, a huge resource list with links and that sort of thing. So that's over in the Etsy shop. Another thing is the Getting Started on Etsy book. It's a complete guide to getting started on Etsy. So if you're just starting out and you're interested in selling your polymer clay earrings, this is a great resource for you to be able to hit the ground running, get those items listed, and hopefully start making sales. Another one is our brand new product photography ebook. This one is huge. If you're selling online, your product photos need to stand out and be bright and beautiful. And sometimes that can be a little bit tricky if you don't have much experience. So this product photography ebook will walk you through the steps of getting fantastic photos with, um, you know, not super expensive equipment and things like that. Just little tricks and things that you can use to get the best photos possible. And lastly, we have polymer clay color recipes. So I have tons of kits over there with a huge variety of colors. I have a fall one that's out now, a Christmas one. Um, we've got pinks, purples, one with just like a wide variety. So those recipes tell you exactly what colors to blend together to make whatever color it is that you're looking for. So that's also a great resource for polymer clay artists. All right, I'm done with a little advertisement in this video. I hope you'll check us out on Etsy. The link will be in the description box down below and we are at etsy.com slash shop slash dashing and dainty. All right, let's get back to the video. Got our flowers chosen. I went ahead and put my clay through my Lucy clay machine at a three millimeter setting. I'm not positive what this would be on an atlas or another clay machine or pasta machine, but you don't want it too super thick because we are gonna cover these with resin. Um, I like my earrings to be somewhat thick, but that's just my preference. 
you just do it however you'd like. So now we're just gonna have fun placing these flowers on the slab wherever we'd like them to go. Sometimes I put them on, take them off, rearrange them, but in all honesty, it's, it's, it's gonna look great however you choose to do so. There is no right or wrong to this. When you place the flowers on your slab, you're just going to lightly press them down. Just give them a good little press. Some of them are gonna stick right down so well, like these flat flowers, they stick down really good. I've got a little leaf in there, but that's okay. I just really love the, the colors of these. They're so beautiful. Some people like to overlap theirs. I normally like to leave some kind of space so that way I know I have room for my cutters to go in between. I wanted to try to fill in this whole slab, so I think I'm gonna add just a few more yellows in here so these look the darkest out of the rest of the yellows i have in the package so i think i'm going to pull some of those out and go ahead and add those in too i like how this added just a little more of the yellow in because there may be some pieces that aren't going to have these flowers in them since they're a little larger than the rest and i only had three of those I can sometimes be a little picky with what I choose. I really want all the colors to sync really good. I want everything to match really well. So I, I can be kind of hard on myself when I'm doing something like this because I want to second guess what I'm doing. <laughs> Even though I always love how it turns out, I do tend to second guess myself an awful, an awful lot. But I really, I'm really, really liking these colors and I think that this is going to turn out beautiful. Now that we have all of our flowers pressed onto our slab, we're going to roll this lightly with our acrylic roller just to make sure that we've got them good and pressed in. Now you don't want to go too heavy with your hand on this, but you want to make sure that you're getting the giving them a good press so that way they're down in the clay. So when you start to cut these, remember I told you before that this is a messy process. Cutting is the messy part. So you wanna make sure that these are good and pressed in. These flowers here have that middle bud and they're kind of thick, but I've got them pretty pressed flat into the clay now. I have got my oven set on 250 with floral earrings. Even though I've got um, Sculpey Souffle I'm working with, I'm going to bake them at a little lower, lower of a temp so that way I don't burn the petals. Now that we've got our flowers pressed into the clay, we're gonna go ahead and start cutting. I have decided on a smaller shape so I can get as many pieces out of the slab as I can. However, I do want to cut two of this larger moon shape because this is one of my favorite shapes that I have. So when cutting these flowers, it can be hard to determine where to cut it at, especially after you've done all this work and it looks so beautiful. It's kind of scary to cut into it. Um, so we're just gonna dive right in and start <laughs> somewhere. I would not use a detailed cutter when doing this. I would definitely stick with more of a solid shape. You just wanna make sure that you're getting the most you can out of your slab. Now that we're cutting into this bud here, we might come into a little bit of a hard time. 
but I'm really adamant about trying to get as much as I can out of these slabs because there's not a whole lot that you can do with it after you're done, but I will show you something that I do with the scraps. Now I can see here that the bud has kind of gotten smushed down. So I'm hoping that when I pull the piece up, I can repair it some, but we'll just keep moving on. So you can see I'm having a hard time determining where to cut. I'm gonna go ahead and use I'm going to save this area over here for my bigger cutter. So I'm going to try to get a couple more pairs. I had to come up with a shape to fit into these voided spots between what I've already cut. And I think this one will work for here and here. You guys see when I say that I try to get the maximum out of my slabs, I do not joke around. Okay, now I definitely wanted to use this big moon. Now I need to press this down with my acrylic board. If you do not already have an acrylic board like this, it's very, very useful. I have a smaller one. Um, it seemed to run away from my desk it's always sitting here on my desk and right now it's not. I don't know where it is. Um, but I got this from Amazon. I actually have some smaller, thicker acrylic blocks that I use to press down my shapes that I got from Hobby Lobby. And they are actually the rubber stamp blocks. Um, and they work really well. Just a little tidbit of information for you guys. I really honestly think as long as you aren't cutting as long as you don't have a full slab of these flowers, which these flowers are perfectly fine. These daisies are great to use, but I like to try to get cutters that go around that middle bud because these can be very messy when you cut into them. These flowers are also very beautiful, but these also can be quite messy when you cut into them. These petals are very delicate and they break. So you want to try to find a large cutter that's that you're really going to get like a, the maximum amount of the flower. So that way you're not cracking the flower. Um, it, it can just be definitely a learning process when it comes to the florals. Now is the fun part. We get to start pulling up our um, remaining clay. This can be hard also sometimes you'll get where your petals aren't cut good enough so when you start to pull up the clay um, it's going to try to pull the petals up with it so i'm going to get my exacto knife excuse the noise and me shuffling through i should have already had this out and i'm gonna try to cut into it where I need to. Your X-Acto knife also can come in handy. Um, you can go ahead and cut into a petal before you cut with your cutter. Um, another way you can do it is sometimes I have, before I start putting my flowers down, I'll lay my slab out and then I'll take the cutters that I want and I'll lightly press in to make indentions all over the slab. And then that helps me determine where I put the flowers. And that's also a really easy way to do it. So that way you'll know that you're not going to cut into the middle of a bud or um, possibly break your flowers 
you kind of have a better idea of where you're going and what you're doing when you do that. So this is pulling up pretty easy. I bake all of my clay earrings on a piece of notebook paper. Most of you may know this trick, some of you may not. Um, baking on notebook paper is perfectly safe. Your paper's not gonna catch on fire. It's not gonna do anything but actually help you. A lot of times when you bake either on a pan or on a tile, you can get that shiny, um, the shiny spots on the back of your pieces. Baking on copy paper totally eliminates that. I love baking on copy paper. It's what I've always done and I will always do it. So you wanna make sure you have a sharp blade. When you pull these up, you're gonna slide under them at an angle. I have done this technique a lot. I have done it many, many times. So it may look a bit easy for me to do it, but I have definitely had my share of <laughs> um, anxiety when it comes to floral slabs. So please do not get discouraged because trusting the process on this is absolutely key because once you get done and once you have these flowers baked into these clay pieces and hanging on your ear, oh, it's so worth it. Or hanging on someone else's ear, which is even better. Now see how this kind of crumbled? That's okay. It made a little bit of an indent on this one. Um, I'm not sure if I'll still use it, but I'm definitely gonna bake it. Okay, to protect the flowers even more, I'm going to bake these with a piece of printer paper on top of them, just to kind of put a barrier from the heat to not turn the colors as much. These colors are gonna turn. They're going to get a little darker um, really what I like to do is I like to bake mine in my oven. Everyone's oven is going to vary. Um, I do use an external thermometer in my oven to make sure I've got the temperature correct. Um, but I do these at 250 for 30 minutes. That's what works best for me. Everyone's oven is different. And once you start to make clay earrings, you get to know your oven. Um, so a I'd say about after 20 minutes or so, I start to just peek in and lift up the paper just to make sure that we're not um, browning up all of these too bad. So I am gonna pop these in the oven and I will come back when they are baked. Here are a couple of my pieces right out of the oven. As you can see, the colors did not change much at all. So that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and get these sanded and drilled and I'm gonna use some resin on them. And once they're cured and ready to be put together, I will come back and show you the final result. All right, friends, here is the finished product of our wildflower clay earrings. I hope this tutorial was useful for you guys and you got lots of good information to make your own wildflower clay earrings. Kristen, thank you again so much for allowing me to be a part of your channel. This was so fun to do and I hope to see you guys again soon.